Well, hello Thrivers. Welcome to another day of Thrive Bible Devotions. Man, Monday morning, we are getting started today in the book of Galatians. As a matter of fact, today we're going to do an introduction to the book of Galatians before we start our daily devotions every day in, in, in it. Um, we'll look at the beginning of the book, though. We'll look at the first couple of verses, and, and at least verse 1, um, verse 6. We'll take a look at a couple of things here and, and really dive into uh, um, to what, really the overview of the book of Galatians. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We pray that you just help us understand your word today. Lord, we know that your word is truth. And in that, Lord, it has such power and, and promise for our lives. Lord, help us today as we study this to um, understand your word, to um, to add it into our hearts, Lord, to, to apply it into our lives that we might glorify you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you got your Bibles, we're going to be going... We're going to be looking at a few verses today. Why, Joel? Why? We're starting the Galatians. Why do you need a few verses? Because we're going to be putting context behind this book. So we know who wrote the book, where it was written, um, you know, who it was written for, the time of the writing, and, and maybe some things on this, and why all that's important as we begin our study into the book of Galatians. Um, so as a matter of fact, we start in Galatians chapter 1, and we're going to look at that real quick. Um, it says, plain and simple, it starts off with the word Paul. Paul is making his introduction here, right? Paul, an apostle, and, and then, you know, he's writing to the churches of Galatia. Um, and that's how he starts, Paul. So the author of the book is the apostle Paul. You ask Joel, okay, well, we know the apostle Paul. And, and, and great, you might know a little bit about him, but we're going to give you some background on Paul. Um, Paul, um, it, Paul, first off, was a huge persecutor of the church, right? He was there persecuting the church of God. As a matter of fact, um, Acts chapter 8, verse 1, as I'm turning there, in Acts 7, uh, Stephen uh, is preaching a huge sermon. At the end of that, um, he angers the Jews, and the Jews pick up stones uh, to stone him, and they kill him. And uh, um, it, it, the chapter 7 ends with, and Stephen fell asleep or died. And verse 1 of chapter 8, and Saul approved of his execution. So that's how it begins. Um, verse 3, it says here that, um, um, but Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Um, go on, look at chapter 9, verse 1. Uh, but Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Uh, that, is this, that is Paul. Paul describes it in Acts 22. Um, we'll go over there real quick. Oh, I'm going the wrong way to Acts. Um, over to Acts 22. Paul is describing his life at this time. And he says here, all right, go back over here says here in verse 4, he says, I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. This is... Paul. This is the, the persecutor. This is the, the man who writes this book is, and spent his life persecuting and, and going after and in, in murders, right? And like Stephen and others, and, and in bonds, you know, cuffing them and roping them, tying them up and bringing them, dragging them from, I mean, as far as Damascus, you know, down to Jerusalem, just all around the region, bringing them in and punishing them and, and just, you know, it says ravaging the church. And that's the man who writes this book. Of course, things happen in his life differently, right? Paul, though, not only was a persecutor of the church, but he was a very well-credentialed Jew. Um, a really well-credentialed uh, Jew. As a matter of fact, um, in that same passage there, we read verses 4 and 5 on Acts 22. In verse 3, he says, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strictest manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, as all of you are this day, I pers and then he goes on. I persecuted. So, so Paul was 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 a Jew of all Jews, right? He was 
He was um, brought up in Jerusalem, educated at the feet of Gamaliel. Uh, you may wonder, who's Gamaliel? Well, I'll tell you what, he was a very, um, very respected uh, rabbi. Um, Acts, go back to Acts chapter 5. You'll remember here in Acts 5, Peter and John had, had uh, healed a guy. They were arrested. They were told that they could leave, but not to preach Jesus anymore. Of course, uh, they're preaching Jesus some more, right? So they get arrested again. And, and um, um, as a matter of fact, they, uh, it says here in verse 27 of chapter 5 of Acts, And when they had brought them, they set them before the council of the high priests and questioned them, and uh, say, We strictly charge you not to teach in his name. Yet um, here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. And of course they get mad and, and then they get upset with them. And uh, it says here that when they heard this, uh, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, same guy, the one Paul learned from, right? Named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And then he said to them, and he, and he coaches them and, and gives their wisdom with which the council then agrees with and, and, and follows. So that's who, that's who Paul was brought up with. That's who he learned from. His teacher, right? He was a disciple of Gamaliel, um, a very highly respected one. And one who would stand up and the whole council showed up and listened, even when they were angry and wanted to, to kill people. Um, so he was a very well-credentialed um, Jew. As a matter of fact, uh, in Philippians chapter 3, another great passage here as we're studying um, as we're studying Paul, um, chapter 3, Paul says here in verse number 4, he says, I have confidence in the flesh. If anyone also thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. I mean, he is a, a well-credentialed um, Jewish Jew. Um, also, Paul, uh, and by the way, uh, I was going, the next thing, he, he had a miraculous conversion uh, to Jesus. Uh, the Bible describes um, in Acts Paul on his way to Damascus, right? We saw that in chapter 9 um, of Acts. And he's on his way to Damascus uh, to persecute the church, right? And, um, and on his way, uh, a great light shines, blinding Paul. And Paul hears the voice of Jesus saying, you know, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And, and Paul, immediately realizing it's God, it's Jesus, fell down and worshipped and believed. All right, it was immediate. And... and um, and he believed Jesus. And from that moment on, he wanted to live. He was living his life for Jesus after a miraculous conversion on the way to Damascus. After that conversion, he went on to um, establish churches. Um, I mean, from Israel, uh, really, uh, some say, we I mean, be a Bible, we can say all the way to, you know, into Europe, right? Um, some history, some historians say he went all the way into uh, today, Great Britain today, to England. Um, we don't know that for sure. It's not sound in the Bible, but that is um, what some people say. Uh, what we do know, though, is he planted churches from the shores of, of Syria, you know, uh, right there in the Mediterranean, just north of, of Jerusalem or, or Israel, all the way you know into Europe, into Greece, and, you know, and down that way, um, Asia Minor, and into Greece. So he planted churches everywhere, and that's what most of the Book of Acts is about. I mean, you get Acts chapter thirteen on, and it is it is really for the most part almost completely. Um, the story of Paul's ministry as he plants churches. So tr Paul's a persecutor of the church. He's a very well-established Jew. He uh, has a miraculous conversion. He established churches from, uh, you know, in that whole region. And then he also wrote most of the New Testament. 13 out of the 27 books of the New Testament were written by Paul. No other author wrote as many books as he did. Um, it may be 14 books of the New Testament. Um, there's some disagreement on one of them. But uh, he wrote, I, I mean, man, can I name all 13? Yeah, let me, go, let, me go, <laughs> let me cheat here a little bit. Um, let me look at my table of contents on the, on the books. I'll tell you. He wrote Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 
2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, right? That's the 13. And he, some people believe he wrote Hebrews, um, which would be number 14. So he wrote all those books of the New Testament. Um, an amazing person, uh, flat out. Uh, so it says Paul, then, an apostle. And that's who Paul was. He was an apostle. The word apostle means a messenger, one sent on a mission, right? He, uh, he clarifies that. A Paul, an apostle, right? A, a person on a mission, not from men. His mission wasn't from men, nor through men, right? It wasn't from men or given through them. No, no, no. But through Jesus Christ and God the Father. In other words, Paul says he got his mission directly, right? His being sent, him being a messenger, him sent out on a mission directly from Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, that is who Paul is, right? He's an apostle. Um, and that's, that's what we're looking at. He says, it also says, and, and also from the brothers that are with me. So he had people with him also. So he's writing this letter and he says, hey, this letter is also from, you know, the brothers that are with me. And then he writes in verse two, right? Um, he says here, to the churches of Galatia. Now, Galatia was a region uh, of Asia Minor, uh, you, know, the, you know, basically in the middle of Turkey, modern day Turkey. Uh, from the northernmost parts of that area of the central Turkey down almost down to the coastal region on the Mediterranean. So so not quite the coastal region was was a couple of different area, you know, provinces, but um, a big section of, the, of most of that area there. Uh, and that's who he writes this to, right? The churches there in Galatia. Now the question is, when did Paul write the book of Galatians? Um, I told you guys already I, I, in some of the previous videos, right? But I, I've chosen to do um, these devotions in the order in which I believe the New Testament books were written. Um, I believe that Matthew was the earliest book written. I believe James was second. And then I believe Galatians is third. Um, so I believe it's an early writing. Uh, some people say it was written between 49 or 48 and 49 AD, maybe up to 50. Uh, some say it was after 55 AD. Um, and there's a discrepancy there. People, you know, kind of argue about, well, I don't know who are. People argue. Some people do, right? Uh, I'll tell you what, though, guys, for me, I love to study the Bible. This was a fantastic study for me. Um, I could go into this forever with you guys, but let me just make it quick, make it simple for you, all right? Uh, it all comes down to two major, the dating of the right, right? So when this was written, it comes down to two major things. One is, who are the Galatians he's talking to? And two is, um, when did the story in Galatians 2 take place? Um, there's a story in Galatians 2 we'll look at in a, in a, in a couple days here in <clears throat> when did that take place? So number one, um, who is he writing to? Well, Galatia is this big air territory, right? In the northern part, it is um, the ethnic people there are the Gauls or the Galatians specifically, right? That's that's who lives in the northern part of Galatia. Uh, but the whole region is called Galatia. It was a it was a province of um, of Rome of the Roman Empire. Um, in Acts chapter 13, Paul starts his first missionary journey. And you see in, in verse 14 that he goes into Antioch and Pisidia, which is in southern Galatia. All right, And from there, he goes to Iconium uh, in chapter 13, verse 5. Uh, again, which is in uh, the, the whole province of Galatia. From there, he goes to Lystra and to Derbe. And then he goes from Derbe back to Lystra, back to Iconium, back to Antioch. And then comes back out of Galatia and heads back to uh, where he began. Uh, and so... I tend to believe that he's probably uh, writing this letter to those that he visited, those he, you know, um, that region. If it was the higher region, the, the you know, the, the other area, the ethnic um, Galatians, then it would be a, a different ballgame because we don't really know when he went to that region. It, it could have been on his second or third missionary journeys, but it, it wasn't on his first one. And so, um, you know, it makes it, to me it seems clear, it's, you know, most odds are it's probably the, the lower area. Um, you know, if you believe the former, then it could be a much later writing. If, if you lean to the latter, right, that it's the, the lower region, then it would be an earlier writing. Uh, when did the story of Galatians 2 take place? Man, Galatians 2 talks about Paul going to Jerusalem. And um, he says here that after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of a revelation uh, and set before them, though privately, uh, uh, before those who seemed influential, the gospel he's proclaiming to the Gentiles in order to make sure that I'm not running or had run in vain. 
Um, you know, he goes on to talk about, about this, this situation. Um, and the question is, when does this take place? Um, and so, again, the, the, the two major thoughts are, well, this took place you know, in Acts chapter 11 uh, or Acts 15. Um, Acts 15 is the big council of Jerusalem. Uh, Paul is there and they're discussing, hey, what are we going to do with the Gentiles? Do they need to be circumcised? Do they need to obey the law? Which is what Paul's talking about as far as obeying the law and, and circumcision here in, in, in Galatians 2. But, um, but we have also Galatians 11, I mean, Acts 11. And let me re read a couple verses here for you guys on that. Um, I, I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, make sure I save my place over there. Acts 11, it says here, um, oh, i got to find the exact verse. Um, he says, now in those days, uh, and by the way, he's in Antioch, just north, you know, outside of, in, in Syria. He says, in those days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. And so Saul has a, a, a trip to Jerusalem here in Acts chapter 11. Um, now, uh, what's this, the problem is with, with Acts 2, with Galatians 2 is that he, Paul has been giving a, a recount of his, um, where he's gotten his ministry from, and he's recounting the times he's been to Jerusalem. And so, uh, if this was Acts 15, then he's totally skipping over Acts 11. And, and what that's going to do is it's going to make his, his, what he's telling the Galatians less credible. Uh, he's going to be leaving out an important, you know, one of those, those trips to Jerusalem. And so that would be bad. The other thing is that uh, in Galatians 2, he talks about how he went to them privately. Um, and if he went privately, then, uh, then that's not the council of Jerusalem. Right, because the Council of Jerusalem was not was not a private matter; it was very public, and so that's what we're seeing here. So, uh, then if if uh, Galatians two is talking about Acts eleven, which I believe it is, right, and the people we're talking to, the Galatians are those in southern Galatia that he visited on his first missionary journey. Then most likely, uh, and by the way, and there's no mention then of the Council of Jerusalem, which really tackles the the, the main things that. Uh, Paul's talking about in the letter to, uh, to the Galatians. So if that's the case, then what happens is we probably have a letter written just prior to the Council of Jerusalem. Sometimes after Acts 11, but prior to the Council of Jerusalem, which took place between 49 and 50 AD. That makes this an incredibly early writing. Uh, 48, 49 AD, after his first missionary journey, um, you know, an incredibly uh, early writing. Now, the question is, what is the book of Galatians about? What is the theme of Galatians? What is the main um, reason it's written? And, 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 it's, you know, here, and here's what's going on. And by the way, get this. So we've had the church, we've had the Jewish church, right? The followers of Jesus, uh, primarily Jewish, being persecuted. And they're just, you know, they're coming out hard on their persecuted, thrown in a prison, right? Beatings, deaths, all that stuff. And they're being scattered, right? But then you have Barnabas and Saul, and they've been preaching in Antioch, and, and the Gentiles are starting to come to know Jesus, right? And they go, and they, they're going to the regions, they're preaching in the synagogues, but then the Gentiles are coming, uh, and, and they're planting basically primarily Gentile churches, right? And so the first major um, um, problem or trial that the, the Gentile churches are having is that there's a group of Jewish believers, right? Jewish Christians who are coming in, and trying to tell them that they can't be believers in Jesus unless they get circumcised and obey the law. Right? Can you imagine that? Hey, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Oh yeah, by the way, you got to get snipped. Right? You got to, you know, have your thingy snipped and, you know, we'll take care of the foreskin off that. And then you can be a believer in Jesus. And then you can be saved. <laughs> hey, what kind of God? I mean, imagine that being the gospel, right? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and get cut. And then you will be saved. Uh, that's not the gospel. Remember, right? that's what's going on. These, these Jewish Christians are going around and, and trying to tell them that this is what they need to do. They're following Paul and telling that. And that's, that's the thing. So he comes back out of Galatia and he's getting reports from the churches in Galatia saying, well, we've been told we need to go and believe you know, the Jews and do what the Jews say um, in order to be believers in Jesus, in order to be Christians, in order to follow the way. 
Uh, is this true? And, and just picture this, guys. This is the first major obstacle for the Jewish, for the, for the Gentile churches, that we have believers teaching or, 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 or corrupting or, or twisting the gospel, the very basic basis of all of our, our, our the foundation of what we believe. The church is doing this to the church. And that's the very first, and by the way, it happens today. Right, the gospel is continually being twisted, and, 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 and that's Satan's plan, right? He doesn't want the gospel. There's power in the gospel. And so it gets twisted, and it gets, it gets uh, corrupted, and he wants to change it so that people aren't following Jesus and, and, and aren't understanding salvation and, and aren't you know, uh, living in the liberty where Christ has set us free. And that's what they're doing. And, and so Paul is, is tackling that issue here. And, and so the, the beginning of Galatians, he's going to set his credentials. He's going to say, listen, this is why you should listen to me and not these other Jewish Christians. This is why what I'm saying is important and, and it has authority, right? And then he's going to tackle the whole idea between law and freedom and explain that and teach the theology part of it. And then from there, he's going to teach the practical application of the gospel into people's lives. And you can almost go to first two chapters, second two chapters, last two chapters. I mean, it is... It is, it is a beautiful arrangement in how this all works. And this is what we're going to get into, guys. That is the purpose of the writing of the book of Galatians. And I'm excited to get into it. Man, you ought to be excited too, right? He says in verse 6, uh, verse chapter 1, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one. Uh, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. And that is what this book's about, and that's what we're going to be tackling. And that's why this book is such an amazing book in the Bible. I'm excited to get into the rest of it, and I hope you are too. Tomorrow we start at the beginning of Galatians. I hope you're ready for it. I'm excited. I hope you are too. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow.